The Tennessee Titans are actively pursuing a trade for Legarius Sneed, and it would be a risky move to make. I'll explain why on today's edition of the Locked on Titans podcast. Let's get it. You are Locked on Titans, your daily Tennessee Titans podcast. Part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. On Titans Podcast. I am your host, Tyler Roland. Titans fans, today's edition of the Locked On Titans Podcast is brought to you by Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, use the code Locked On for twenty dollars off your first purchase. It was a quiet day too so far for the Tennessee Titans, but it could be the calm before the storm as the Tennessee Titans are actively pursuing a trade for Legarius Sneed. They're also setting up a visit with Chase Young and the Titans' most recent free agent signing is probably my least favorite so far. We're going to talk about all of that on today's show. Before we get into it, thank you for making the Locked on Titans podcast your first listen each and every day, Monday through Friday, Tennessee Titans content all year round, always for free. Make sure you get subscribed, stay subscribed. It's your team every day here on the Locked On Titans podcast. Throw a thumbs up on the video as well. The show is always free. All I ask for in return is the press of a button. I am your host, Tyler Rowland, 25 years as a Tennessee Titans fanatic. I've covered the team for USA Today, for Sports Illustrated. I'm a certified film junkie as well, breaking down the Tennessee Titans over on my other YouTube channel, at Tic Tac Titans. So excited to cover everything with you guys today, and we got to start with the report about the Tennessee Titans trying to trade for Legarius Sneed, it came from local Nashville radio host Buck Rising. But he says, quote, Legarius Sneed is still something the Titans are actively exploring a week later. The buzz around Sneed and the Titans has never been louder. Look, we have heard recently that the Titans were interested in Sneed. And according to Rising here, it sounds like that is the Titans' top priority. I mean, I'm paraphrasing here. He didn't say that. But if the Titans didn't make any free agent signings on day two of free agency and they are actively pursuing a trade for Legarius Sneed, it sounds like that they are holding off on the rest of their free agency to try to figure out this situation with Legarius Sneed. And my everydayers will remember, we talked about this recently. The trade that would probably get Legarius Sneed to the Tennessee Titans is just incredibly risky. And then you have to give him a big-time contract as well. It's just a risky proposition overall for the Tennessee Titans. Number one, you're probably just going to have to give up the number 38 overall pick. Like, that is that would get it done right away, in my opinion. If you gave the Kansas City Chiefs your number 38 pick, boom, done deal, you get Legarius Sneed. You get to pay him all of that. Like we saw this happen when they franchise tagged D Ford. They traded him immediately for a second round pick. So I think that that is how this deal could get done. But are you willing? Ask yourself: Are you willing to give up the number thirty eight pick, knowing that the Titans would only have the seventh overall pick in the top one hundred in this year's draft? that's loaded with wide receivers and loaded with offensive tackles, the two positions that the Titans need the most. So you would be solving cornerback. I mean, just for a moment, stop thinking about the trade compensation, the contract, and just think about Legarius Sneed as your number one cornerback, Chidobe Awuzie as your number two cornerback, and then Roger McCreary in the slot. I mean, that is one of the better cornerback groups in the entire NFL. I would argue that that is a top 10 cornerback group in the NFL and at one of the biggest positions of need for the Tennessee Titans cornerback that is often overshadowed by offensive tackle and by wide receiver. I mean, that would be huge for the Tennessee Titans. So if you just think about it like that and the cornerback group that the Titans would be able to put together with this trade, I understand the allure, but... Then we have to get into the realities here of what kind of contract are you given to Legarius Sneed? 
He's 27 years old. Well, 24-year-old Jalen Johnson just basically got a two-year, $46 million contract. It was basically two years, $44 million, $22 million a season. And then after those first two years, the the Bears could get out of the contract. Basically, every NFL contract is a two-year contract, if you're honest with yourself and you look at how the deal is set up. So the Titans would be looking at a similar deal, probably two years, 44, 44, 45, 43, 42 million dollars. Are you paying Legereus Sneed 22 million dollars a year and then also giving up pick number 38? Like, I just don't think that that makes sense for the Tennessee Titans. The best way to rebuild a team and the best way to have sustainable success in the NFL is to draft guys who turn into Pro Bowl, all pro level players on their rookie contract. That's what the Titans need to be searching out. So I get why they would want Snead. I get trying to totally stack out the cornerback position, especially if the Titans are going to play the blitzing, aggressive style of defense under Denard Wilson that I expect that they're going to play, that we've been talking about all week. If the Titans do want to play that way, then Snead does make a ton of sense. A true shadow corner, number one, only 27 years old. So I get the alert here, and I get why he would make sense. But again, are you going to give up 38? Are you going to give him 21, 22 million dollars a season for two years? Uh, Are you worried at all about some of these knee issues that you hear about with Snead? That he's got basically a, a, a progressive knee issue that's not going to get better, that continues to get worse. Will that potentially lead to a drop off in play? You worry about those things. So what is a trade that would work? I mean, I said a couple of weeks ago, I would do a fourth round pick and a sixth round pick. I would be comfortable doing that. The Titans still have their first. They still have their second. They still have their fifth. They still have three seventh round picks to move around if they need to or just keep those. That would leave the Titans with enough ammo. I would be comfortable doing that, a fourth and a sixth. Likewise, I would do uh, a third in 2025 and then a sixth this year. I would do that if you want to replace the sixth round pick with Traylon Burks. Maybe Kansas City would be interested and, you know, not as expensive as Legereus Sneed, quite a bit less than Legereus Sneed, give you a chance to maybe hit on a former first-round wide receiver when Kansas City needs some more wide receiver help. Maybe you replace that sixth-round pick with Traylon Burks in either of those packages. One other package that I thought was interesting, 38 for 64. So you give them, the Titans get Legereus Sneed and 64, and the Chiefs get 38. Maybe you add in a a sixth-round pick into that as well to sweeten it up. But I think there are options for the Titans to get this done, but trading the the second-round pick, trading pick 38 for LeJarius Sneed, that is too dangerous to do, in my opinion. I would not do that. But with that being said, we got a lot to talk about because the Titans are also reportedly in on Chase Young the former number two overall pick. So we're going to talk about what that means for the Titans going forward. Before we get into it, though, do want to let you guys know that today's episode is brought to you by BetterHelp Online Therapy. So if you guys had an extra hour in your day, what is the first thing that you would do with it? Would you go for a run, take a nap? read a book. A lot of us spend our lives wishing we had more time. The question is for what? If time was unlimited, how would you use it? The best way to squeeze that thing into your schedule that means the most to you is to make it a priority and therapy can help you find out what matters most to you so you can make more time to do it. If you're thinking about starting therapy, you have to give BetterHelp a try. It's entirely online. It's designed to be convenient. It's flexible. It's suited to your schedule. You just fill out a brief questionnaire to get matched with a licensed therapist, and you can switch therapists at any time for no additional charge. That's something that's really important to me. When I did my therapy with BetterHelp was to make sure I had a therapist that I felt was a good fit for me, and they make it really easy on BetterHelp. So make sure that you learn to make time for what makes you happy with BetterHelp. Visit betterhelp.com slash locked on today to get 10% off your first month. That's betterhelp, H-E-L-P.com slash locked on. Titan. 
Falcons fans, let's continue today's recap of day two in free agency. We just talked about Legereus Sneed and the pursuit for him in a trade. Now we got to talk about the Chase Young visit and the Titans have added Kenneth Murray as their fourth free agent signing that happened late on Monday night. I'm going to dive into that right now and my thoughts on that free agent signing. We'll talk about Chase Young at the end of the show. Plus, talk about Derrick Henry saying goodbye. So we'll hit on that for a little bit. But Kenneth Murray was the fourth addition for the Titans at the end of the night on day one. I put up a short video about it right before I went to bed. Obviously, was a little tired. Thank you guys for understanding that. But this is the most questionable move that the Titans have made, in my opinion. Um, Kenneth Murray has had a lot of ups and downs in his career so far. Before I get into kind of the good and the bad, I'll just give you the general info here. Kenneth Murray is six foot two, 240 pounds, freak athlete like one of the best athletic testers in combine history. He is a freak physically. He's only 25 years old. So still a ton of upside, still a young player who can grow and can learn. The Titans gave him a two-year, $18 million contract, but it's not actually not, don't be in my comments saying that they paid him $9 million a year. That is up to $18 million. He's getting a two-year, $15.5 million contract, and once we actually get the details of the contract, it'll probably be about one year, $7 million, and the Titans can probably move off of him after it. So basically two years, $15 million on the contract. Average, I've been talking about Aziz Alshire being a replacement level average starting linebacker in the NFL. And that's exactly how they paid Kenneth Murray as. You're just a replacement level. You're not a star. You're not somebody we're committing big time money to. Nothing like that. You're just a, an average starting linebacker. Okay, so the price, there are other guys that I would have preferred for that price. Uh, Devin White would have rather taken a chance there. Isaiah Simmons would have rather taken a chance there. Uh, there are other options out there on the market that we've talked about, like a Jerome Baker that I think would make a ton of sense for the Titans. But the Titans decided to go with Kenneth Murray. And honestly, they need another linebacker. They need someone else as well, not just Kenneth Murray. So here's the breakdown, in my opinion, of Murray. He's, a, like I said, he's a freak athlete. Absolute freak athlete. Great speed. Sideline to sideline. He's physical. He's willing to hit. He's violent. All that stuff you want. He also is an excellent blitzer, which I think I think is probably what drove home this signing. This is why the Titans went out and got Kenneth Murray, because he is a fantastic blitzer. And I think, like I've been saying, like I said in the first segment, like I said yesterday, like I've been saying for a few weeks now, I think Denard Wilson is going to follow his mentors like Todd Bowles, like Greg Williams, like we saw some from Mike McDaniel last year. And they're going to throw a lot of complex pressure packages at offenses. They're going to crowd the line of scrimmage. They're going to blitz linebackers. They're going to blitz DBs. They're going to make it so that you don't know who is coming on the blitz, but everybody that they have on the defense could get into the backfield and make it tough for you. Aziz Alshire was a terrible blitzer. He is not a good blitzer from the linebacker position. That is not what he does well. Kenneth Murray, on the other hand, is a fantastic blitzer. His pressure rates, his ability to win when he blitzes, those are the things that stick out most from his game, all right? So those are all things that I think fit really well. And he was very productive last year. He had his best season as a pro, had over 100 tackles. He had three sacks. He had one interception. He is a guy who's been productive when he's been out on the field, but he's missed a little bit of time here and there. He's been inconsistent, and he is so bad in coverage. His awareness rating, if this was Madden, his awareness rating would be in the 50s. Like, he's just lost out there in terms of his responsibility. Now, maybe you get Frank Bush as a linebacker coach. You get Denard Wilson just saying, hey, don't think about how to play. Because he was in Brandon Staley's defense where there's a lot of zone coverages. There's a lot of quarters coverage. There's a lot of read and react stuff. If the Titans are going to just let the dog off the chain and say, hey, don't worry about protecting the yard. Don't worry about how far you can go. Just go. You know, if they do that, then that could make sense. But I would like to see Kenneth Murray as kind of a weak side blitzing linebacker. 
The Titans still need a number one linebacker, in my opinion, to go with him. If they're banking on Kenneth Murray being their top linebacker this year, well, I, I just think that's a very, very dangerous game to play. That's an incredibly risky move, and that's why this signing has been my most questionable signing out of the top four that the Titans made, their first four. This one is risky, and I thought there were better options on the board, and the Titans still need a linebacker, and I don't think that making Kenneth Murray your number one linebacker is just a good move. Now, again, I try to look at this from both things. If I gave my honest grade on this signing like I did the others yesterday, I would give it a C plus. I gave Tony Pollard a B minus. I gave Chidobe Awuzie an A minus. I gave Lloyd Cushenberry an A plus. I would give this one a C plus because I do see the upside. Again, freak athlete, probably is going to fit in the scheme, only 25 years old, had some bad coaching earlier in his career. Maybe that's a big problem. Maybe that's why the awareness, the understanding, the coverage stuff didn't improve or didn't meet what people thought when he was an early pick in the NFL draft when he came out four years ago. So maybe, maybe, you know, all of his good traits can be maximized by the Titans in their scheme. All of the bad traits can be improved with better coaching. But again, it's just a risk. And I think that there were better options. I wanted this, this, because we're going to talk about basically taking a risk on an uber talented guy for a cheap deal to see if you can get a gem. We're going to talk about that when we talk about Chase Young at the end of the show. But they're basically doing that with Kenneth Murray here. And I'm trying to be fair because I wanted the Titans to do this with Isaiah Simmons. You're somebody who could say, hey, Isaiah Simmons is not good. Isaiah Simmons has been a complete bust. Isaiah Simmons is not a good player. You could say that. And I can't really argue with you. But I wanted the Titans to take a chance on the risk. They're doing that with Kenneth Murray now, a freak athlete who's underperformed, but he's been more productive than Isaiah Simmons. He's been a better player than Isaiah Simmons. So I guess I don't want to be too hypocritical and say, hey, I wanted Isaiah Simmons and then be mad about Kenneth Murray when it's the same philosophy. But the reality for me here is Isaiah Simmons is going to be way cheaper. Isaiah Simmons is probably going to be half that, and I didn't expect Isaiah Simmons to be the Titans' number one linebacker. I thought they were going to bring him in as the will linebacker, as the weak side linebacker, as their number two linebacker, bringing in a Devin White or bringing back Aziz Alshire as a guy to be their number one linebacker. So if the Titans bring in a Devin White, if the Titans bring in a Jerome, a Jerome Baker, then I'm going to feel a lot better about this Kenneth Murray signing, knowing that he isn't expected to be their number one linebacker. But as it stands right now, it's definitely a risky move for the Titans to do this. They gave him, you know, the contract isn't really as big of a deal as my lack of belief that he can be a solid player. So I recognize that the Titans can't solve everything overnight. We talked about this online, on Twitter, at Tic Tac Titans. Follow me there. I've talked about it on the show. My everydayers will remember. The Titans can't perfectly solve wide receiver, offensive tackle, cornerback, linebacker, all in one offseason. Even with the, the cap space and eight picks, they can't do all of that. They simply can't. All right? So, to me, I understand that you're going to have to take some dart throws on some of these guys, just like they did last year. They took a dart throw on Andre Dillard. They took a dart throw on Arden Key. They took a dart throw on Aziz. They took a dart throw on SMB. If you don't think that you're going to get a long-term solution, like the Titans think they got with Lloyd Cushenberry, with Tony Pollard, with Chidobe Awuzie, if you don't think that you're going to get a long-term solution, then I get taking some dart throws at some positions where you don't feel you can do that. And Kenneth Murray is that. So I do see the upside. I do see the things that made him attractive to the Titans. But I just think that it's a risky move and there were better options on the board. But with that being said, let's talk about Chase Young. Visiting the Tennessee Titans, some other names that went off the board on Tuesday like Derrick Henry and some names that make sense for the Titans going forward. We'll do that now. Before we do, want to let you know that today's episode is brought to you by Game Time. Game Time is the best place to buy tickets because it takes the guesswork out of buying tickets. Game Time has a ton of awesome features. They have killer last-minute deals, like their flash deals, like their zone deals. I went to a Drake concert recently, and I got $40 off my ticket because of a flash deal. It was absolutely awesome. They also have all-in prices, so you know what you're actually going to pay for your ticket before you pay. Like, I hate that about buying tickets, that it's almost so much more expensive at checkout 
you don't have that problem on game time. Also, they give you a view from your seat. Like, literally, you can see in the facility what your view is going to look like from where you're sitting. They have sports. They have music. They have comedy. I'm going to a Lakers game in two weeks that I got tickets from game time. So, I really do love game time. I know you guys are going to love it as well. Again, it takes the guesswork out of buying tickets. Download the game time app. Create an account. Use the code Locked On. For $20 off your first purchase, terms apply. Again, create an account, redeem code locked on, L O C K E D O N, for $20 off. Download game time today. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. Titans fans, let's cap off today's recap of day two of free agency. A quiet day. A quiet day for the Tennessee Titans. But like I said at the beginning of the show, I think it might be the calm before the storm. All right? The Titans are actively pursuing luxurious Sneed. The Titans added Kenneth Murray. And the Titans are also having a visit. With Chase Young, we're going to talk about Young's visit. Before we do, thank you for making the Locked On Titans podcast your first listen each and every day. It is the number one Tennessee Titans podcast in the world for a reason, and you guys definitely showed your support yesterday. Over 10,000 views on my day one recap video. Thank you all so much. Couldn't do it without you. Again, make sure you get subscribed, stay subscribed. Also want to let you know that Locked On has launched the first ever National Sports 24-7 streaming channel. It's on YouTube, and now it's also available on Amazon Fire TV in the free Fire TV channels app. It's called Locked On Sports Today, and it's here for you 24-7 with the top sports stories of the day, and you get coverage on every league from our national shows. Find Locked On Sports Today, now available on the free Fire TV channels app. So according to Aaron Wilson, also a lot of scoops today. Good job, Aaron Wilson. According to Aaron Wilson, Chase Young will take a visit with the Tennessee Titans. Now, the Titans aren't the only team that Chase Young is taking a visit with, okay? He's also looking at the Panthers and the Saints. He's going to visit them first and then visit the Titans. So I wouldn't call the Titans front runners here. I don't think the Titans are the favorites to sign Chase Young. But I understand why they're looking at Chase Young. It makes a ton of sense. He's only 25 years old, okay? Remember, six foot five, 260 pounds. Number two overall pick in the 2020 draft, considered one of the better edge rushers in recent memory coming out of college. But we have to talk about the realities with Chase Young. He has been a disappointment. I mean, I don't want to say an outright bust, but he had seven and a half sacks. His rookie year was Defensive Rookie of the Year, I do believe. Yeah, in 2020, Defensive Rookie of the Year. Played 15 games, 44 tackles, was making an impact. Then he only plays nine games and deals with injury in 2021. Then only plays three games in 2022, dealing with an ACL. Comes back last year, his fourth season. Plays 16 games. And has seven and a half sacks once again. So upping the production. But gets traded middle of the year to San Francisco for a third round pick. And I know that I saw what a lot of you guys saw. And you saw what I saw. Chase Young was loafing it during the playoffs. During the playoffs. Critical moments in the NFC Championship game. He is loafing it. Literally not even trying to tackle. Not trying to pursue jogging when he could be sprinting. It was despicable stuff. So you have all the talent, all the athleticism, all the upside. You see him, okay, he had a major injury. He comes back. He has a productive season. Maybe we take a chance here. But you think about those injuries, the unreliability, the lack of production, and then the loafing, the effort issues. That's why I wasn't high on signing Chase Young when we did our free agency preview. Like, I understand it. But there's a lot of risk here. There's a lot of upside. There's a lot of obvious upside if he hits. Still young, that talent, that pedigree, that ability. It's like Kenneth Murray. You could get a guy 
who expected to be better. And these are the kind of dart throws that maybe the Titans need to take. And that's why it brings me into, those are the concerns. You obviously understand that I'm worried about this as an option for the Titans. But if the price is right, say Chase Young takes a one-year, $12 million deal, $8 million of it is guaranteed, $4 million in incentives. Maybe it's $7 million guaranteed and $5 million in incentives. Certain sacks, games played, tackles, tackles for loss pressure, stuff like that. Build that into his contract. If you get a motivated Chase Young with a deal that, like I said, seven, eight million dollars. The thing is, the Titans have so much cap and they don't need to burn it on a bunch of players with long-term deals where they're going to have to pay for it with dead cap for years to come. Hey, if there aren't a lot of good options on the market, then give out a bunch of one-year deals and take chances on guys. Just don't kill yourself with dead money in the future. And Chase Young could be someone like that. Another guy who is a name that could make sense that's like that is Mekhi Becton. That, that's the same thing. Mekhi Becton, first-round pedigree, disappointing first rookie contract, injuries, some flashes of good play, though. Give him a one-year deal, six, seven million dollars. See what happens. Kenneth Murray, same thing. I had the same philosophy for Isaiah Simmons. You're seeing the same maybe philosophy here with Chase Young. So if the Titans feel like there aren't any other guys to give big time contracts to, and they got all this money left to play with, probably, you know, 30, 40, 50 million dollars on the cap. I don't really care how much cap space the Titans have right now, because they have enough money to do whatever they want still. I mean, Tony Pollard's probably $7 million on the cap. Chidobe Awuzie is probably, I mean, like 10. Uh, Lloyd Cushenberry, probably only like 9 or 10. I mean, Awuzie, I thought, might even be 6 or $7 million on the cap. So the Titans have probably only used maybe $30 million of their cap space. They probably have $50, $40 million left. And they could still cut Dillard. They could cut Brunskill. They, I mean, they could restructure Landry. They could do all kinds of stuff still. So they have as much cap as they want. And moving away from the Chase Young discussion, which I think is risky, but I understand why they're doing it. Moving away from that, Derrick Henry went to the Ravens, folks. I tried to prepare you. I tried to tell you the Titans should let him walk. It's time to move on. I want more versatility in the backfield. I'm tired of the entire defense knowing what the Titans are going to do based on the running back in the backfield. Tony Pollard is a versatile guy. Derrick Henry isn't. So Derrick Henry basically got, it's two years up to $20 million. It's basically a one-year $9 million deal for Derrick Henry. It was the right move for the Titans to go to Tony Pollard. He's more versatile. And I just want to say it's better that Derrick Henry ended up in Baltimore than Houston. I would not want to play Derrick Henry twice a year and deal with people complaining about that. And Houston may be a better team this year, just naturally. So, anyways, Calvin Ridley, you guys can let that dream die. He's going back to Jacksonville or going to New England, one of those two. He's not coming to Tennessee. Patrick Queen went to the Steelers. I know a lot of you guys wanted Patrick Queen to go with Kenneth Murray. Not happening. And, you know, he basically got a one-year $13 million deal from Pittsburgh. That's too expensive, in my opinion, so I'm fine. And Darnell Mooney, if you wanted Darnell Mooney, say goodbye. Uh, that's not happening. Um, he went to Atlanta. So, um, anyways, uh, just I'm not going to lie to you guys. I'm checking my phone making sure that I'm not missing any breaking news while it's happening. Uh, but yeah, Darnell Mooney, Derrick Henry, Calvin Ridley, Patrick Queen, uh, all people that uh, all people that you guys were all interested in, they're not going to be there. So at wide receiver, I still like Hollywood Brown for the Titans. At offensive tackle, I still like Jonah Williams. Uh, at linebacker, again, Jerome Baker, Devin White, Isaiah Simmons. I like those options. Cornerback, if they don't trade for Legereus Sneed, Rocky Sin makes some sense in my opinion. Uh, Cameron Curl, Chauncey Gardner-Johnson at safety. I'd really look at Chauncey Gardner-Johnson. Uh, Jimmy G, Josh Dobbs. The Titans were reportedly interested in Jameis Winston, but he went to Cleveland. I think Jimmy G, Josh Dobbs, Joe Flacco maybe could make some sense. Um, 
Toronto or Eric Armstead on the defensive line. I'd like to see the Titans go there to replace Danico Autry. Again, Chase Young on the edge is an option for him. And then at tight end, I like CJ Uzama. Adam Troutman is a backup option. So a lot of names still on the board for the Titans. I guarantee you there will be a late night move. And I'll have to come back on here and break it down with you guys. But whatever it is, I'm excited for it. Can't wait. Be on the lookout. That is going to do it, though, for today's edition of the Locked on Titans podcast. Free agency is rocking and rolling again. Quiet day two. Calm before the storm. As always, I'm your host, Tyler Rowland, and this was Locked on Titans. 